people are heading to the polls, advanced voting is underway. But this is not an election, it's more of a referendum. Leaders want parents to buy into a plan to reform schools, a plan they say will give more control. On this night, they're visitting Alderville. Thank you. The Anishinaabek education system is a system of First Nations working together to support achieving educational priorities and goals that are established by the First Nations. It consists of uh, 30 First Nations in Ontario and they'll be working together in groups called regional education councils and those councils will be part of a Kinematsuan education body which is a central education authority. The Anishinaabek Nation says having their own locally controlled schools will be better for children. That's what we are striving for, for our kids to be comfortable in a school, to be put to to feel part of the education system. Right now, that's not here. It's taken a while to get here. Part of the reason is money. The change here is that each year the community knows how much money it will get to run the schools. That kind of predictable funding was just not available before. What's more, for years funding for First Nations kids was less than non-First Nations kids. Some estimate First Nations students receive $2,000 less per child. The New Deal promises First Nations kids will be funded to the same level as their provincial counterparts. But perhaps the biggest selling point is culture. The school will have their own curriculum with an emphasis on Anishinaabek history, language and identity. So that students are learning uh, through doing. So there will be a fall hunt that would be incorporated into the curriculum so students could participate in that and learn uh, about hunting, learn about animals, learn about the ceremonies that go along with these traditions. So really it's about taking the curriculum and enhancing it to increase Anishinaabek identity. The Anishinaabek Nation needs 12 communities to ratify the agreement. Each community then needs 25% plus one of its voting membership to pass a yes vote. Any community that votes no will continue with its existing funding. Julie Bothwell takes advantage of advanced voting. She makes it no secret as to which way she will swing her vote. Hopefully we're being able to exercise our rights and say that uh, we know what's best for our children, what's best for our youth, uh, know what's best for our future. It's been a long time coming. The deal has been in negotiation for 20 years. But it's not the first group to sign a deal like this with Canada. The Mi'kmaq in Nova Scotia signed a similar agreement 16 years ago. In a country where only 36% of First Nations children living on reserve ever graduate high school, the system led to a 90% graduation rate. There's a lot of... Uh uh, similarities that, uh, that are between the two agreements and we hope to uh, you know, learn from the Nova Scotia experience and bring that to Ontario and, and likewise have a system that can benefit students. The final vote is on December 2nd. If it's ratified, it's expected the Anishinaabek education system will be operational by April 2018. Delaney Windigo, APTN National News, Alderville, First Nation, Ontario.